we're going to shrug our shoulders up to our ears and release and let them go and shrug up to our ears and release them back and shrug them up to our ears and when we're releasing really focus on bringing your lats back your shoulders back just one more here perfect now what we're going to do we're going to interlink our um hands together and we're just going to stretch back nice long back like so stay here for a few breaths and then we're just going to do the opposite concave back nice rounded feel that flexion really important to wake up the upper back before a run so always remember just to give it a little bit of effort a little bit of time and we're just going to come on now onto our mats in a cat cow position so just on um your all fours we're going to inhale go into our cat having a slight bend of that spine looking forwards and exhale into cow right round that spine bring the bottom under and inhale into cat position and exhale into cow just give yourself a few moments completing this exercise mobility is so important for runners helps with that injury prevention keeps us nice and limber so if you can just spend 10 minutes warming up just doing a little bit of mobility exercise before any run and you will find that you'll be a more powerful runner. You'll just be readier, ready for that run. Okay, and come into a nice, a nice um, flat back position. And all we're going to do is come into a slight bear hold. So we're just going to push through the feet and the hands. And we're just going to raise our knees off the floor slightly. And I want you to step back with your right foot. So your right leg is nice and straight behind you. Let me show you here. And we're just going to do... 10 pulses, just bobbing that toe up and down, just 10 pulses here, just waking up your hamstrings, waking up your feet. Perfect, and bring that right leg towards you, left leg out, we're just gonna do exactly the same on the other side. Just 10 nice little rocks with that left leg stretched out behind you, just waking it up. Perfect, and now we're gonna come just sitting on our mat. We're going to go into our 1990s. I include this in every single uh, mobility routine that I do. So just sitting on the mat, knees perpendicular to your body, and we're just going to roll over on the bottom, come over on the other side. So try and keep that nice angle there. If it is a little bit tough, you can just increase the angle of your legs and go from side to side like so. Or you can bring it a bit closer, and you can also just use your hands to guide you over. Now today we're going to be focusing on the lower limbs. So we're going to be focusing on the feet, the ankles and the calves. Now often problems with the lower limbs, they're not actually to do with um, weakness in the lower limbs as such, but often they're more symptomatic or problems higher up your body. So your hips, your glutes might not be firing enough. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to come into some clams. So I want you to be nice and long in this position. So we're going to stretch out. We want our elbow, our hips, and our feet to all be in a line. Now just bring your feet towards your bottom for me. So we've got this nice, nice um, bend in our knee, and we're just going to open and close here. Now when you're opening and closing here, really think about your glute engagement. Focus on squeezing those glutes coming up, and release. So it's important to make sure our glutes are awake, our hip extensors are working before a run, so they can power and drive you forwards, rather than relying on just overextending in the front of the stride. Okay, perfect. We're going to swap onto the other side now. So if you gain a distance in your stride just by putting your lower limb further forward, what you'll find is you will start getting those lower limb pains and injuries because your lower limb isn't designed to carry such a big force through it. You really want to make sure you're pushing from the glutes, your foot is coming under your body with each stride, not flinging out in front of it. So you've got maximum chance of power and reduced injury risk. Perfect, we're gonna come into a glute bridge now. So feet hip width apart, come down onto your back for me. And we're just gonna be going for 10 standard glute bridges. So squeeze with your glutes and come up and down. We're going for 10. Perfect, keep it going. You want to squeeze your glutes as you come up. Don't worry about um, 
having enormous range of motion here. It's more about activating the glutes. You want to make sure your back is nice and tight, your back isn't overextending, and you're just squeezing those glutes coming up. Great. When you've done 10, I want you to step a little bit further away with your feet, have your heels on the floor, lift your toes to the ceiling, and we're going to do another 10 blue bridges, but you'll find now that the angle is bigger, that your feet are further away from your bum, that your hamstrings are having to work a little bit harder. So we've got 10 blue bridges here, waking up those hamstrings. Perfect. And when you've done 10, we're going to go back into the 10 glute bridges a little bit closer. So uh, heels closer to the bum, feet flat on the floor. You can have your hands in the earth. You want a little bit more of an aggressive wakening to those glutes. So let's go with those glute bridges. Just do a couple more. Perfect. And when you're ready, extend those feet a little bit outwards, tiptoes to the ceiling, and we're going for 10 of the hamstring bridges. Fantastic. Okay, and when you've done 10 of those hamstring bridges, what we want to do is come to standing at the top of our mat. And we're just going to do our finger toe marches. So nice and tall with the hands, we're just coming and we're kicking alternating hand with alternating toes. We're just going for 30 seconds here. Now, you'll notice if you've been to any of the other sessions that this is uh, like a key part to all my mobility and kind of wake up routines. So that's why it's included in this one today. Excellent. Now what we're gonna to do today that's gonna to be a little bit different, we have always been doing our knee hugs, which is where we just pull our knee in, give it a nice hug, stretch out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, instead of um, alternating, we're just going to put all our weight through the right hand side, bring the left foot up, squeeze your knee towards your chest, and we're going to go for five ankle rolls in one direction here. When you've done five, you can move over and do five in the other direction. Now, when you've done all of this, you want to stay on that one leg, if you can, and we're going to do some ankle pumps. So what this means is, Flexing your toe up, so your toe is pointing towards the ceiling, and now pushing it down, so your toe is facing towards the floor. Up to the ceiling, to the floor, to the ceiling, to the floor, two more, to the ceiling, to the floor, last one, to the ceiling, and to the floor. Well done. Okay, we're now changing legs, so bring that attention to the left leg, squeeze the left glute to help you with your balance here, and we're just going for five ankle rolls. Really important as runners to do quite a lot of exercises on that single leg. Obviously, when we're running, we're only ever running on one leg. And reverse your feet now. So if you can mimic that in training as much as possible, it just means your mind-muscle connection is a lot stronger. Your body's much more prepared for that impact. Okay, let's go for the pumps on this side. So toes to the ceiling for me, and to the floor. Toes to the ceiling, to the floor, to the ceiling. To the floor, two more. Really flex those muscles. Often neglected the muscles in the feet. Perfect. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to come to our tiptoes on one side of the mat. And uh, when we're doing this, I want you to think about where your glutes are. So when we run, a lot of people tend to have an anterior pelvic tilt, popping their bum out, which means it's not as engaged, it's not as powerful when you run. So what we want to do, imagine you've got a bowl of shallow water sitting in your hips. And um, so you've got a bowl of shallow water here. You don't want it to spill out the back or the front, okay? So what we're focusing on is keeping nice and neutral in our pelvis as we come up onto our tippy toes. And we're just going to do some small walk forwards on our tippy toes, really engaging those glutes, making sure you're not going too far back. And we're just walking back now on our tippy toes. Really think about where those glutes are. Engage the core. Okay, and coming down just to normal standing. We're now going to do the same, but on our heels, okay? 
So raise your tiptoes up, and I know you're going to look a bit silly right now, that's no problem. We're just going to come forward, a little heel walk, stop here, and we're coming backwards. This is actually a great way to wake up all those muscles and tendons, protecting the front of your lower calf, around where your shin is. Well done. Okay, and now our last warm-up exercise, we're just going to do our leg swings. So grab onto a piece of wall, something like that, which is doing nice, dynamic, big stretches with that leg. So I always say, this isn't a balancing exercise, this one is just about waking up your body, it's absolutely essential before any run. And let's just go laterally as well. So four in front of your foot. Four to the side. And four to the back. And when you're ready, let's go for the other leg. So left leg or whatever leg you have done. Big, nice swings. Perfect. Now we're doing four supersets today. And each superset is going to have a movement that's specific for the lower limb to work with that proprioception. And then that's going to be combined with a full body exercise. Okay, so we're just going laterally here. So you will still get a really, really good workout. Perfect. And just, there we go. And to the back. Excellent. So our first workout, let me just pop on here. Excellent. Our, what our first exercise is going to be, I'm going to be doing some small hops, okay? So what I want you to do, visualize on the floor a small line, okay? All we're going to do, come over to one leg, we're going to jump in front of the line, behind the line, to the left, and back, okay? So that line is the all-important point. Now, we're going to do five on one side, five on the other, and that's going to be super centered with some nice overhead squats. So what I want you to do, it's just um, have your hands nice and wide above your head. Look slightly towards the ceiling. You want your toes to be slightly pointed out and come all the way down, okay? So we're going to do five of the jumps on each leg and then 10 of the overhead squats. We've only got 30 seconds of rest. So when you're ready, get onto that one leg and let's go. Forward over your line, back, left, right. Forward, back, left, right. Keep it going. Don't worry if you fall over, especially if this is your first time doing this exercise. It is quite tough. Well done. And when you've done five, just pop over onto your other leg, ground through that leg, lift the other leg up, and let's go. Forward, back, right, and left. Forward, back, right, and left. Forward, back, right, and left. Two more. Forward, back, right, and left. Just the one more. Right, and left. Well done. Okay, now join me in these overhead squats. Toes pointed outwards. Nice wide stance. We're bringing the arms up, and we're going down to ten. Nine. Squeeze those cheeks on the way up. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, well done. Three, two, and one. Well done. You've got 30 seconds of rest. Grab yourself a little glass of water. Whew. Perfect. Just going to try and get us some tunes on. Whew. Okie dokie. So, when you're ready, we're coming to that left leg, focus our attention on that balance, and let's just do those little hops over the line. Forward, back, left, right. Forward, back, left, right. Forward, back, left, right. Two more. Whew. One more. Well done, and then on the other side, we're just grounding down. Forward, back, left, right. Forward, back, left, right. Forward, back, left. Just two more. And one more. 
Well done. Okay, we're going into those overhead squats, dippy toes outwards, nice and high chest. Let's go for 10. Nine, eight, well done. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. 30 seconds of rest again. Have a little sip of water. Whew. Well done. Okie dokie. So I've got one more round of that. Hopefully you're feeling that your lower limbs are fired up. Your ankles are perhaps working a little bit. You've probably been a little bit wobbly. That's absolutely fine. What you find, it's like anything. The more you do of this, the easier it will be. And it basically means that when you're out on a run, and you might trip over something, say, um, I don't know, a tree stump or something like that, you'll be way better instantly thinking, okay, my mind knows what to do. Okay, let's go. Forward, back, left, right. Forward, back, left, right. Forward, back, left, right. Two more. And one more. Well done, okay. Let's come to the other foot. And let's go for five. For four. Three. Two. And one. Perfect, now we want our toes to be nice pointed outwards. And let's go, last set of these overhead squats. Really waking up your legs, boosting that heart rate nice and high. Well done, halfway, five more. Four, three, two, and one, well done. Okay, take a little breather to probably go through our next exercises. So next what we're going to do we're going to be doing some speedy curtsy lunges. So we're going to be bent nice and low, so nice low knee stance here. We're going to be bringing the left leg behind the right leg, back to the top and the opposite, okay? This is going to be supersetted with a high plank with a shoulder tap. So we are getting our upper body in this workout. So this is just nice high plank. What we're doing, we're tapping our shoulders, and we're bringing our left foot out and back, right foot out and back, okay? We're doing that for eight reps. Okay, have a sip of water when you're ready. Join me. I've just moved my mat away for this one because you can get a little bit caught on it with the speedy curtsy lunges. Okay, we're going for eight on each side, guys. Let's go. And together, that's one. And two. Try and get a nice bounce if you can. You want to be nice and light on your feet in this exercise. It's perfect practice. If you do tend to be a heavy stepping runner, we've got three more. Just to be nice and light on those feet. And one. Well done. Okay, we're coming down into a shoulder. Taps with those legs out. So let's go. Left shoulder, right shoulder, left foot tap out, right foot tap out. Left shoulder, right. Left foot, right foot. Left, right, left, right. Well done, left, right, left foot, right foot. Halfway. And those little taps. Left shoulder, right shoulder, left tap, right tap. Well done, just three more. Woo. Keep those hips down. The core engaged, we've got two more. And last one. Well done. Whew, and relax. Oh, just have a nice sip of water. We've got 30 seconds here. Whew. So what you need to focus on with your lower limb, lots of people do worry about um, forefoot strikes, things like that. The main focus is just to, focus, just to worry that when your foot is landing, you're not landing like this. You're not giving yourself that natural break. Instead, your foot is landing underneath your body, ready to power you into that next strike, okay? The length always needs to be from the back of the stride rather than the front, okay? Right, when we're ready, 
let's go for those quick curtsies. Left, together, and right. Well done. We're going for eight. Whew. Okay, we're halfway. Keep it going. Keep that energy up. Whew. Two more. Nice and light on those feet. Great, and come on, straight down into the high plank. We're going. Tap that left shoulder and the right. Left foot out, right foot out. Left, right. Well done. Six more. Keep it going. Left, right. Well done. We're halfway. Just got three more. Nearly there. Last one. Let's go. Left, right. Left foot, right foot. Well done. Ooh, take that 30 seconds of a breather. Ooh, so as I was saying, you want all that extension to be in the back of the stride, not the front. That's where you're going to get the injuries when your lower limb is just all the force is going through it at that angle. You can imagine that's much less healthy than if you're pushing off and it's just naturally below um, your body. So don't worry too much about heel strike, forefoot, all this kind of thing. Just work on your technique um, through your glutes, through your hamstrings, and your natural, correct, and healthy foot pattern will start to emerge. Okay, last round, guys. Let's go into these curtsy lunges. To the left, together, and right. Let's go. Whew. Well done. We're halfway. We've got four more. Keep the control. Two more. Last one. Let's go. And into those shoulder taps. Okay. We're coming down into that nice high plank. And we're tapping. Left foot, right foot. Well done. Four more to go. Left hand, right hand. Left foot, right foot. Keep the pace up. Three more to go. Left, right, left foot, right foot. Well done. Just two more. Left shoulder, right shoulder. Keep the energy up. Whew. Well done and relax. Oh, excellent. Okay. Now, our next exercise is going to be the three point lunge. This is fantastic for so many reasons for runners, particularly because it helps you work on that single leg strength, which ultimately helps with your core stability, your balance, your proprioception, how your brain functions when you're on one leg. It's just so important for when you then hit the streets. So what it's gonna be, we're gonna step back with the right foot into a low lunge. Then we're gonna to step to the side into a side lunge and we're gonna bring it together, okay? So the focus here needs to be Driving down all your energy, all your focus onto your left leg. This is the, the trunk of the tree, this is the core stability, okay? And it's almost like you're just gliding your right foot away from it, okay? That's going to be supersetted with some hostage squats. So we're going nice and wide again. Toes out, hands behind the head. We're going low and we're coming back up. We're going to play around with some holds and some pulses with our hostage squats, okay? So when you're ready, Come to the top of your mat and let's go. We're gonna go all the way back with that right foot. All the way to the right side and together. We're going to six. Work on that balance, work on that stability. This is not about speed, this is about control. This is about proving to yourself that you can do it, that you're not rushing and that you're in control of your body. Okay, we're switching sides. Left foot back, left foot to the side, and together, back to the side, and together. Let's go, four more. Well done. And together, just two more. And together, last one, to the side, and together, well done, okay. And we're going into our hostage squats. Nice wide start, hand behind the head. Let's go, five reps. 
nice and low. Four, three, stay in time with me. Two, and one, we're holding, hold here for five, four, three, two, one, and give me five pulses. Five, four, three, two, one. All the way up, squeeze the glutes. We're going for five more squats. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done, 30 seconds rest. Shake those legs out. Have a little drink. Now, I've been trying to get my Spotify to work, but it's not playing ball, unfortunately. I'll just have another go in these 30 seconds. But easier time to take a bit of a break. Whew. Perfect. We've got 10 more seconds until we want to start again. Hopefully, you're enjoying these three legged three point lunge. Um, I'd really recommend adding them into your kind of daily leg routine if you can. Okay, so in five seconds, we're going again. Focus down that left leg. Okay, that's your pillar. Let's stretch back to the side and together. Well done. Back to the side and together. Tense that core. Feel that coordination. Feel that nice, powerful stretch in each stride. We've got two more reps. And together, and back, well done. And together, okay, we're swapping sides. We're going left foot back, to the side, and together. Well done. Keep it up, chest nice and high. Whew. Three more reps on this leg, and then we're going into that rather nasty pulse combination. But well, well done, we can all do it. Thank you so much for sticking with me with this workout in spite of the technical difficulties. Okay, let's go. Hands behind the head. We're going straight into our squat. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, and one. We're holding down here for five, four, three, two, and one. And we're pulsing. Five, four, three, Two, one, and we're coming up. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. 30 seconds off. Have a little sip of water. Well done. Now you might find that you are what is called a stiff ankled runner. Um, this often means when you don't have enough um, flexibility in your dorsiflexion so all around your ankles that kind of thing a great test that we could actually just do now if you wanted have those feet nice and close together and just practice squatting to the floor if you're struggling with that might just be a sign that you need to work on that dorsiflexion if so just send me a little message i've got masses of drills and things to improve with that foot stability so do have a little faith okay when we're ready let's go we're going right foot back Right foot to the side, and together. This is the last round of these exercises. So make it our strongest round. We've got four more. Hope you're sweating as much as I am. Three. Whew. And two. And one, well done. Whew. Okay, other side. Back on that left leg, and out, and together. Let's go, well done. Chest up, core tight, working on that single leg stability. It's really gonna benefit you on your next run. Two more reps, back to the left, together. Last one, let's go for it. And together, okay. Back into our hostage squats, the last round. Hands behind the head, toes out, let's go. Five. Squeeze up to the top. Four, three, two, and one. And hold here for five, four, well done. Three, two, one, and let's pulse. Five, four, three, two, one. Squeeze all the way up. Let's go. Five, four, 
three, two, and one. Well done. Whew. Fantastic. Take a little breather. Let me talk you through our next exercises. Now, over the last few weeks, we have been doing um, single leg squat work with a chair. Now, this week, just wanted to bring that challenge up a little bit. So, we're going to just try it without the chair this time. So, all we're going to do is coming down into around a quarter to a half of a normal squat. So, what I want you to do, um, just watch me for now, stand on that left leg, bring your right leg up. You can have your hands here, or it's best really if you have them in that almost like a running position to help with your power. You're going to come down on that left leg and drive up and hold. Okay, now these are not easy. If you do need um, a regression, what you can do is you can have that leg like so. You can squat down and then just use this right leg as almost like a little tripod to keep your stability, okay? That's no problem at all. And then you want to drive up, okay? So try and drive up with a bit of a bounce if you can. If you can't, that's not a problem in the slightest. Now this is going to be supersetted with some ab work, which we'll come to um, after our first round, okay? So when you're ready, kind of watch me from the side, let's come up. So we're bringing our focus down that left leg. So it's a bit more challenging than last week. And we're just gonna come into a little half squat position and we're gonna jump up like so. Okay, and we're gonna come down and jump. Use those arms to power you. If you're falling over, don't worry at all. Just use that back leg as a bit of a prop, okay? Perfect, we've got one more. Well done, this is, this is really excellent plyometric training, okay? Now do this one from the front. Let's all go together, standing on that one leg, using the arms to go down, and let's push up with a jump. And we're coming down, pushing up with a jump. It's all about slow on the negative section and power up, well done, three more. Little wobble, no problem at all, we've got two more. And last one, perfect. And when you're ready, come and join me on the floor. What we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing 10 leg lowers with a couple of pulses, okay? So, let's go, if you're on the floor, let's go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, well done, two, one, and hold your legs in this lower position for me. I want to raise your arms up to the sky and just give me five tiny crunches here. Five, four, three, two, one, well done. Pop those hands below the bum again. We're going to do 10 more leg lowers, okay? 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and hold in this low position. Well done. We're releasing the arms again, and we're going for five crunches. Five, four, three, two, and one, and relax. Well done. Oh, we've got 30 seconds of rest before we go back into those single leg squats. So today it has been a really good full body workout. Worked out the shoulders, the abs, the arms, obviously the legs, glutes, everything. So hopefully you do feel like you've had a nice sweaty time today. We're going two more rounds on this last session. So those single leg squats, they really are challenging. Don't be worried about using your back leg as a little tripod. That's no problem at all. Um, but all these single leg exercises are especially helpful if you do struggle with that dorsiflexion, what we were talking about before, okay? Really helps with strengthening proprioception. Just absolutely vital to your arsenal. Okay, so we're going, bringing up that one leg. Let's use our arms for power. We're squatting down into the half position, powering and jumping up. Well done. Squatting down, powering up, and down. Powering up, three more. Really focus on that power, on that drive. Well done, Ooh. there we go. One last one on this leg, Ooh, well done. Okay, hand the other side, right leg, 
give yourself a second, think about your weight distribution. So let's go down nice and slowly, and we're jumping. Whew. Nice and slowly, jump up. Nice and slowly down, hand up. Got three more. Whew. And well done. And the last rep. Whew, well done. Okay, straight down into our ab exercises, everybody. 10 leg lowers, hands under that bottom. Let's go. 10, 9, doesn't have to be a massive movement. 8, 7, keep it in that range where you can feel your abs. 6, at all times, okay? You know that point where you raise your legs too high and your abs kind of get a bit of a breather. We're not wasting time with that today. We're just working within that smaller range of movement, okay? Three, two, one, and hold here, release the hands upwards, let's go. Five, four, crunch those abs. Three, two, one, and hands back under the bottom, let's go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. And hold that position there. Raise those hands up. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Oh, well done. And relax. Oh, give yourself a moment to breathe. I certainly am. I've got 25 seconds before we're starting. Now this is going to be our last round of exercise of the day. So let's make it our best round. Really think. Now single leg squats, they really are challenging. The more you do, the easier they'll be. So if you've been able to complete even half of these reps, well done. That's fantastic. Okay, so let's bring our focus down. Take a moment to breathe. Squeeze that left glute. We're getting it to work now. Let's use our arms to drive down and push up into the jump and come down and drop. Down and drive halfway. Well done. Keep it going. Down into that squat and drive up. Last rep on this leg. Well done. Slowly down and bring it up. Fantastic. Okay, swap legs. Take a little second. Have a moment of breath, and we're coming down to this side and pushing up and down and up. Three more reps, everyone. Well done. And two, slowly down and drive up for me. Well done. Okay, let's do this ab circuit one last time. Hands under the bottom. We're going for those leg lowers. Let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And we're holding here. Release those hands into the sky. 5 crunches. 5, 4, 3, Two, one, hands under the bottom, let's go. 10, nine, back to those leg lowers. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we're going for 10 pulses now, 10 pulses. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, Whew. and relax. Well done, everyone. Whew. Take a moment to breathe, have a sip of water, and we're gonna go into a nice cool down. Well done. That wasn't easy today. Pretty much had single leg work in every single superset, which is very, very challenging for both the body and the mind, but really good thing to work on. Okay, so when you're ready, just join me in a nice stretch. Now, if you've got a bit of wall, what I'd recommend is pushing, push on a bit of wall, just around chest height, 
and I just want you to have your feet hip distance apart and we're just gonna flatten that back and roll forwards okay so you keep your hands above your head this should be a nice stretch for the shoulders for the forearms and just hold this for a few seconds thank you so much for staying on even though we did have our zoom problems at the start it's a real problem i really appreciate you still all joining this session i hope you still had a good time um, and next week i'll promise we'll have another sweaty session where the music and the zoom will work i think there's just been a real problem with um the zoom outage that went on this morning perfect now you want to keep your hands where they are stretch your left leg far behind your yourself and bring your right leg a little bit closer we're going for a nice standing lunge here just pushing against that wall you should feel a nice stretch up your left hamstrings well done inhale exhale through the mouth Well done, and left leg forward, right leg back, let's swap sides, and stretch out that right hamstring. Now there are masses of quite funny drills you can do to increase your foot strength. There's actually things like, um, you can like, spell the alphabet with your ankle mobility, stuff like that. You can um, bizarrely like picking things up off the floor, like Lego pieces or whatever with your feet, are generally some of the best tools in a runner's arsenal. If you read any of the running blogs, it's always the number one thing that comes up. It's quite odd, but it just really helps with the dexterity of the feet and the movements. 85% uh, of your, the control of your foot actually comes through your big toe. But this just kind of show that you do need to give a moment for our toes, for our feet, which we so often forget. Okay, perfect. Now just come to standing. We're just going to um, stretch out our quads so you can hold on to something if you need to. Just bring that foot up behind you. Stretch out that foot if you can. Perfect, tense the core. And just holding here for a few seconds. Well done everyone. And exhale. We're gonna release that foot, pop it in front of us, and just point those toes to the ceiling, and we're just coming over. Now I like to rest on my right thigh when I'm doing this. Um, just so I can really pop my weight over here to really stretch out my hamstring again. If you've got anything particular with your feet, your ankles, maybe you suffer from having high arches or weak arches and get kind of your feet sometimes collapsing on each other. Well done, we're coming up onto our right foot, just hugging our knee inwards and hold here. But yes, if you do struggle with kind of having arch problems, maybe you get a bit of pain laterally across your feet when you run, just let me know. So there's lots of single leg exercises that really help for that as well. Can kind of prevent things like Achilles tendonitis. Just doing this with the other leg now. Bring that right leg up. Yeah, prevent things like Achilles tendonitis, um, plantar fasciitis, if any of you have heard of that, that can often be a real problem for runners. That's where you get pain in your heel. Um, and the sole of your foot. Um, not always when you run, but it can be kind of, if you're walking downstairs or first thing in the morning, um, that can be kind of like tissue damage to the bottom of your foot. Okay, and stretched. We're stretching this out again. So it's just exactly the same on this side. You step on this, you can see a bit better. You can see toes pointing towards the ceiling. And just stretch that out. But yeah, most commonly, you know, running injuries are from the weakness of the muscles and just doing too much too soon. So do bear that in mind if you're already bored or locked down, you're going out for your third 10k of the week, something like that. Might be a little bit too much. Nothing wrong with a little bit of rest, recovery, and some strength and conditioning work. Okay, we're bringing that awareness onto our left foot, stretching up. Ooh. Nice and tall. Perfect. We're just going to do a bit of upper body stretching to finish. So we need to grab your left uh, wrist with your right hand and stretch over to that side, just to the right side. You can kind of pull at your left wrist a little bit with your right hand to really extend that movement. Take a few breaths and come up to the top, swap side. So hold your, your right arm with your left hand and over to the other side. 
well done. And we're just going to finish with those concave convex back stretches again. So grasp your hands behind your back, stretch that out. And the other way. And well done guys for sticking with this workout, bearing with me through the technical difficulties. Nice stretch up to the sky and bring yourself down. Well done. Thank you so much everyone. Great I really workout. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Valentina. You're a star. <sighs> See Bye, you next everyone. week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.